Body bags will whore lies. Hello YouTube, welcome to Body Bags. Uh, week 123 here on the channel. I'm Saturday. No, I'm not fucking Saturday. It's Saturday. I'm not Saturday 365. Hello, how's everybody doing? Um, it just dawned on me earlier today that it's been that long, like 23 weeks since we stopped doing those theme weeks that we used to do. You know, we always have a theme every week, but uh, yeah, it's a fuck. It's flown, man. It's flown. But anyway, the film I want to talk about today is from 2009, 2010, and it's called Cornered. And this stars Elizabeth Nicole James Duval and Steve Gutenberg. Mahoney's back in town. Fucking prankster. Um, directed by Daniel Mays. What's this about if you haven't seen it? A serial killer with a morbid voyeur fetish is targeting and terrorizing convenience stores. He tortures and murders his victims in creative ways in front of closed circuit television cameras, then steals their surveillance tapes as personal trophies. With the reward up to half a million dollars, the serial killer is the hot topic at the downtown LA liquor store owned by Steve. When the beer delivery man shares his concerns about the recent killings, Steve and his motley group of friends fantasize about the plans of what they would do with the killer and the reward money. Cornered. Yeah, so... It's all set um, in a convenience store, and uh, Steve Gutenberg is the delivery man. I think he's the beer delivery man, Monty. And um, he, uh, yeah, it's strange seeing Steve, you know, because he he looks like he's kind of aged well, but that, I think that's because he's got like blonde hair and uh, he's wearing like delivery man shorts. Um, but yeah, he shows up at the delivery store, and you have the the five main characters in the movie, which is Steve, the owner. Um, it's his son or else it's his nephew, which is Jimmy. And then you have Liz, who's, I'm not sure if she's a prostitute or she's an entertainer or something like that, you know, but, um, uh, yeah, you've Liz, you've Donnie, who's, uh, likes donuts. Uh, oh yeah, Jimmy as well. Jimmy's kind of backstory in this is that he's a recovering drug addict and stuff. So he's like Jones in the whole fucking movie. Um, you have Donnie who eats a serious amount of donuts during this. Uh, I think they nickname him Donnie Donut. But uh, the the actor looks like a younger version of that guy in King of Queens. Can't think of his fucking name right now. But um, yeah, and then you have Mona who's um, a funny. She's like a large lady, eats a hell of a lot of ice cream in this movie. But she's um, um, she does like the sex chat phone line kind of things, you know, with the ring up and she says all this stuff. Oh, I'm wearing this. And she's a big, huge woman eating ice cream. And, um, yeah. And as I, as I said, you got Monty, the delivery guy at the start of it. So it's mainly set around those five characters and the movie starts off. They're all just interacting in the store, in the grocery store. And Monty's in the back watching the surveillance cameras and stuff. And he's watching certain people shoplifting and he goes out to deal with that. Donnie is dealing with a guy that was trying to steal a bottle of whiskey and some dog food and ends up uh, having the front door of the store smashed. So then he has to board the whole thing up. Uh, as he's boarding it up, they're all kind of talking about this reward and the, the serial killer that's going around killing people in, in, uh, in grocery stores and liquor stores and things like that. And like, uh, you know, what would they do if, if for, the, for the reward? What would they do? And, the, and they each kind of describe the way that they would kill. Um, the uh, the murderer, the serial killer, if they were to find him and stuff. And there's a bunch of other people that are there that hear them kind of saying it and stuff. So uh, they all go away and uh, Monty goes away and whatever. And you're left with the five main central characters. And the reason they're staying is they're in there is Steve's doing a poker night uh, upstairs above the, the, the liquor store. And they, yeah, they're all going to hang out, drink beer and play poker and stuff. Um, even Jimmy, who's like still jonesing from the drugs and he's trying to get in touch with his drug dealer. Because uh, some of them think that he's been on a holiday and stuff, but it's because he was in rehab trying to deal with that. Um, so basically as they're up there playing poker and stuff, they start hearing noises downstairs and kind of one by one, they go down to investigate what the noise is. And, you know, one doesn't come back. So the other one goes looking for them. And then they think, you know, one of them has gone away. So then they go down and this kind of thing and they get taken off one by one, uh, killed in grisly inventive kind of ways. Um, the things that stick out in this, I really like the idea. And I just brought it up of the, the woman Mona, Whereas um, 
she yeah she does the sex chat line and while they're playing poker and stuff she gets a call from a client so she's doing all that all the sexy talk and all that on the phone and the moaning and everything uh there is a scene where she's like getting attacked and stuff this isn't the spoiler i'm trying to spoil it but she's downstairs and needs help and is moaning and all this stuff. Uh, and they think she's just on the phone doing the chat thing i got a fucking chuckle out of that they're like oh she's still working you know she's on the phone she's grand you know um so overall thoughts and stuff on this movie um it, it's a bit slow like from say the first kind of kill happening to the second kill it just seemed to take you know such a long long time but um it's it's done in a good way i like the, the idea of the movie and i like movies that are, are like this they're either set in bars or um liquor stores or grocery stores or convenience stores and things like that anything that is in kind of a cabin or a secluded house out in the middle of nowhere you know um it's just it's just different i think it you know it, it fucking just shakes up the the whole slasher thing a little bit but um also i like the idea of this because this could be a stage play you know because it's really just kind of two locations used in the movie you have like store downstairs which after they board it up and everything the lights are off so you just have the kind of glare coming from the fridges you know like the fridge lights and stuff like this uh, uh, illuminating the stuff um and then upstairs where they're playing poker and you know talking and stuff so it could have been like a stage play it's that well done acting in it is, is good i liked it um every character in it is pretty good um like the directing of it um like the mood the mood is good it's um it's not amazing but it's a pretty good movie i did enjoy it um nice to see steve gutenberg um you know in a horror as well it's nice to see uh to, to, to see steve in it and um the ending i wasn't too crazy about the ending you know the ending is very predictable you can kind of see it coming you kind of know who the killer is um but the the, uh, the actual you know you've that ending and then there's another kind of ending at the at, you know there's like a kind of a wrap-up ending which i thought was good and funny and stuff um that they did that and that kind of worked so um yeah overall that's my thoughts and opinions on um corner from 2009 2010 um i'd give it a thumb up you know uh i'd give it a thumb up i'd sit through and watch it again yeah no problem thought it was cool thanks a lot for checking out the review um outside of 365 back next saturday with another review take care bye bye now have a good week see ya